for today's video, I'm going to be doing a haul update. About a month ago, I hauled a whole bunch of drugstore and high-end products from Ulta. Kind of did it impromptu style one night as I was just taking pictures of things. And I will link that video down below if you're interested in watching it. But I wanted to make sure I came back after playing around with these products for the last month to give you my thoughts, both good and bad, on the products that I tried. Because there were definitely some real winners and there were some real duds. I did want to call out, I hauled the Makeup Revolution, what is this, the Reloaded Iconic Division palette. This is the dupe for the Subculture palette. And in that haul video I mentioned I had also picked up the Bad Habit Retro Love palette. I have a lot to say about these two palettes. So I have made the decision to actually film a separate video reviewing and giving my thoughts on these two palettes. So look for that video coming soon from me, but we're gonna go ahead in today's video and skip talking about them. Go ahead and get into the video. I know I have a lot that I wanna share with you guys. Up first, this is a primer from Catrice. It's actually described as a light correcting serum primer. There's one shade of this, this is Candlelight. I was really excited about this one because I thought the whole idea of a primer serum really appealed to me. I had tried a serum primer, quote unquote, from It Cosmetics. And if you guys have followed my channel for any length of time, you know I love that primer. It's in my Project Pan for this year. It was in my Best of Beauty 2017. So when I saw a drugstore serum primer, I got super excited. There is just one shade of this, but the ingredients also looked really interesting. It had some aloe leaf juice very high up the ingredient list. It also had hyaluronic acid in it. So all things that made me think this was going to be super, super great, and I was really excited. So on the website, they describe this as something you can either use all alone as a primer, mix in with your foundations, they even suggest mixing it in with different body products and putting it on um, to make your skin super glowy. Um, so I figured there would be lots of different uses for this. So here is it kind of blended out on my skin here. It does give a nice sort of soft glow to it. It does have a little bit of a fragrance to it, like a little bit of an herbal fragrance. So when I blended this onto my skin, it, like I said, it gives a nice subtle glow, but nothing too extreme, nothing even like the Becca Backlight Priming Filter or a Max Strobe Cream. The thing that was interesting to me about this is that it sunk into my skin and it didn't really feel hydrating at all. It was almost like I had put nothing on. So when I first put it on, I thought to myself, okay, that's really interesting. This might be one that somebody with oily skin really likes because it can give them a little bit of a glow, but it doesn't feel super hydrating. Like right now, if I felt my hand, it doesn't feel like I've put anything on here. It's not tacky, it's not super hydrated. It literally feels like there's nothing on my hand. Where I started running into problems was how this interacted with other products. I used a foundation that I know to be super trustworthy on my skin. So I use my Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. I know that foundation. I trust that foundation. When I'm testing a primer, that's typically the one that I test with. And what I noticed at the end of the day was that that foundation was breaking up in weird ways on my face. And I think I have some footage here that I'm gonna insert of kind of what was happening at the end of the day. So I was a little confused because this didn't feel super hydrating. It didn't feel like there was anything on my skin at all. And yet I was having problems with that foundation breaking down in a way that it never has before. So the next time I tried this, I thought, well, let's try mixing it in with foundation. So I used the same Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation and I used a pump of that and a couple of drops of this. And it was really strange. It was like oil and water were like trying to mix together. It was separating. It was almost causing the foundation to like ball up and clump onto my hand. I mixed it as best as I could on my hand and I thought, okay, well, let's just get it onto my skin and blend it out but it was not working. It wasn't blending into my skin whatsoever. It was patchy and separating. It was just incredibly strange. So I thought, okay, so maybe there's just something in this that doesn't like the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. I don't know what it is, but let's go try something else. So I went to the bathroom, I wiped everything off, I re-moisturized, I came back, no primer on my skin, and then grabbed another foundation that I know and I trust a lot. It's the Boots Number no. 7 Stay Perfect Foundation. I love that, that was also in my Best of Beauty. So I grabbed that and added, same thing, a pump of that, a couple drops of this, tried to mix it together. Same thing happened, like it would not mix together. At this point, I have tried mixing this with five different foundations and every single time this happened. So something is happening when it goes onto my skin that causes foundations to break down, even though it feels like there's absolutely nothing on your skin after you apply it. And then when you mix it together with products, it's just not mixing. 
it's like oil and water. It literally is causing the product to like get weird and splotchy and separate and just look like, I don't know, like foundation cottage cheese. It's very strange. So of course I went and looked at the ingredients and the first four ingredients are water, propylene glycol, mica, which is where you're getting your shimmer from, and then your aloe juice. I don't know if I've spotted propylene glycol in a lot of face products that I've tried. I definitely am gonna go back and do some digging through ingredient lists to see if propylene glycol is just not an ingredient that mixes well with other things. My initial searching didn't turn up a whole lot other than it's a humectant. So, but yeah, something about this is not playing well with anything in my collection. So this is going to be a giant pass for me. Happy to report, I actually think works really well, are these Makeup Revolution concealers. These have been getting a lot of hype out there. People are talking about them as dupes for shape tape. So I definitely wanted to put them through their paces. I have the shape tape. I have really enjoyed that. I use a very light amount of it, blend it out really, really well. And then I feel like it almost sets itself. It just doesn't crease very much on me, doesn't settle into my fine lines very much. And as long as I'm using kind of a light hand when I apply, I don't find like it's, I don't find that it's drying out my under eyes or aging my under eyes. So I picked up two shades. I picked up C1, which is supposed to be a neutral undertone for fair skin and C3, which is going to be a pink undertone for fair skin. I didn't pick up C2. It looked very yellowy on the website. So I kind of was concerned that it wouldn't work for my skin tone. C3 is closer to my skin tone. So C1 is going to give me a brightening effect and C3 is going to give me kind of a natural everyday kind of uh, concealer look. C3 is what I would use to conceal on my face for sure. I think the formula feels very similar to Shape Tape. It has the same sort of giant doe foot applicator. Applicator might be slightly smaller than the uh, Tarte version. So I wore this several different times with Tarte on one side and Makeup Revolution on the other. I used the same setting powders, the same blending techniques. And in general, guys, I really couldn't see a huge difference. A couple of things if I wanted to call out minor differences. This one has slightly less coverage to it than the shape tape, but it's still pretty full coverage. I think you can see here, they both kind of covered the same amount on my under eyes. The other thing I would say differently about this one is that I think this formula is slightly creamier and maybe a smidge more hydrating. So I did notice that it settled into fine lines a little bit more and I kind of had to blend those out again before I set with powder. Whereas the Tarte Shape Tape, I feel like doesn't quite settle into those lines as much and sets on its own, but is slightly more drier. This one's a little more hydrating, but as a result, it tends to settle into those lines a little bit more. But to be totally honest, when I patted them both out, when I made sure that there was no excess product in any of my fine lines and then set both of them, they, they kind of look the same. They lasted the same on my eyes. I didn't necessarily notice fading one over the other. And then a major pro that this one has going for it is that it doesn't darken upon drying. Um, I don't know if you call that just general darkening or oxidation. I, I've heard people debate which is the correct term, but in general, I have noticed both my Tarte Shape Tape and my ColourPop concealers darken a half shade to a full shade after they dry down. That doesn't happen with this. The color that you apply seems to be the color that dries down down, and I really love the fact that I don't have to worry about picking a slightly lighter shade and looking a little raccoon-like when I put it on only to have it hopefully settle into a color that's going to be the right one for me. Do I recommend these? Absolutely. So I would highly encourage you if you're interested in this formula to pop into your local Ulta and do some swatching of these. I think that they are putting the full range in most Ultas. That is my understanding. So yeah, this is just a real winner for me. One other concealer that I was trying was the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. This is in the shade Chantilly number one. This is their lightest one. This has a neutral undertone to it. It's very creamy and velvety in the pot. And this is one where I had tried a sample of this and I didn't like it whatsoever because I was putting it underneath my eyes and it is a soft matte finish and I just found it too dry underneath my eyes. Since purchasing this, I've gone back and tried it underneath my eyes and I still feel like it's too dry to work appropriately underneath my eyes but it does a really nice job of spot correcting on my face. So if I have extra redness around my nose, which I frequently do, or breakouts, this works really well to just pick up a little bit on your finger, go onto your skin and blend it out. And then because it's that soft matte texture, has a nice velvety slip to it, it really plays nicely over top of foundations and it has good coverage. Here's the one caveat I'm gonna throw at you. 
I don't think this works any better than the Revlon Photo Ready Stick Concealer that I was already using. They are very, very similar as far as creaminess and giving that soft matte feeling. I think they give the same amount of coverage. I think that they blend out easily. So at the end of the day, will I use this? Absolutely, I will use it up, I will enjoy it, I like how it works, but to be honest, I wouldn't repurchase this over my Revlon one. The thing that this one has going for it though, obviously is its shade range. So you have a zillion different undertones in this NARS concealer and the Revlon one has a much more limited shade range. But really, if you can find a Revlon shade that works for you, I would recommend that over purchasing this. I think they're gonna give the exact same effect on the skin for a heck of a lot cheaper. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy this one. One product that absolutely goes in the YouTube maybe buy it category is this Becca Sunlit Bronzer. I feel like everyone and their mother has been talking about this in their year-end wrap-ups and then their monthly favorites. Like everyone loves this. Even people who don't like glowy products love this. So if you're not familiar, this is a glowy bronzer. I would say it's not like super foily metallic. It's more of a soft finish on your cheeks. This is the lightest shade in Bali Sands. So I really like the undertone of this product. I don't think it's too orange. It's not too yellow. It works really well for fair skin. This is such a forgiving product. Like it almost applies itself. Like it just blends onto the skin so easily. It builds when you need it to, but you never have to worry about applying too much. So I really appreciate when face products like this are not so pigmented that you have to be kind of scared of them. All that to say, I love this bronzer. I thought it lasted all day. It looked beautiful on my skin. Like I said, not too glowy, not too matte, just melts in with everything on your face, never patchy, never skips just a beautiful product and I totally get the hype now. Okay, so next let's talk about the three blushes I picked up because I picked up three different formulas. The first was this Bare Minerals Gen Nude Blush. I got the shade Call My Blush and I wasn't really sure I was gonna be that interested in it, but there was a display in my Ulta when I went in that day and I felt it and I was like, oh, what is this magic? Like this blush feels, I mean, it's like a cloud with like a slip to it. I don't know, like it's, it's unlike any blush I've felt, and that's saying something, because I do love me some blush. And while this is by no means a shade that is going to be too dark for me, it's actually a beautiful sort of mauve neutral pink, I think that this is a color that I assumed was going to come out of the pan and be kind of this intense right away. And actually what I found is it goes on as kind of a sheer wash of color. I'm not saying it's not pigmented, it absolutely is, but it gives a really light sort of soft focus effect that builds gradually the more you use it. So it really gives you a lot of control over how this blush goes on your cheeks, very light wash or build up to something that is definitely this full color here. I don't know, I really enjoy this blush. I actually went out and got a second shade because I was that obsessed while I was using that. And I got uh, a shade that was peachier. This is called That Peach Though. And it's definitely one of those sort of warm apricot colors. So I thought that would give me a really nice sort of dusty mauve color and then also a warmer peach color. I really enjoyed both of these. I think the formula is absolutely gorgeous. I love the fact that they have a shade range that goes from these lighter tones for someone with fair skin all the way down into some really deeper dark shades, but they're all in a very, I would say, neutrally category. You're not gonna find the hot pinks of the world. You're not gonna find any bright fuchsias. They're all going to be muted colors that at the end of the day, I think a lot of people really prefer. So I've loved both of these. If Ulta does any 20% off or like five times or 10 times points on Bare Minerals, I'd be tempted to pick up another shade. There's a couple other ones that I'm eyeing. One blush formula that I knew I already liked and that I knew I would probably enjoy this of as well is the Clinique Cheek Pop. This is Ginger Pop. This is more of a sort of pinky coral color uh, from them. It's a beautiful color, but as you can see, that is a lot more pigmented than the Bare Minerals one was. So this is one where I do kind of have to use a lighter hand. It's not to say it doesn't blend out or it's too clown-like, but there's a lot more intense pigmentation in these Clinique blushes than there are in these. But I also feel like the staying power of these Clinique blushes is incredible. I kind of want to collect all of these. I'm like freaking Pokemon with these little Clinique blushes. I love how compact they are. They're great for travel. They don't break because the formula is stiffer. So as you rub your brush in here, you're not going to get any powder kick up whatsoever. I'm already starting to build that wish list for the Sephora sale that's coming in April. So the last blush that I picked up, I think is equal quality to the ones that I just mentioned, and it's drugstore pricing, which makes me 
so incredibly happy. I love it when drugstore proves that it can do products every bit as good as high-end products, but the one I'm rambling about is the Catrice Strobing Blush. This is the color Mrs. Summer Peach. I really like this. I like that I can target my brush in different places and I really can get a slightly different tone. It is the blush that I'm wearing on my cheeks today. Although they call it a strobing blush, I don't necessarily think it's like the most metallic or shiny shimmery blush that I have in my collection. I would say this is a touch past satin, but it's definitely not the most shimmery blush I own. In fact, I think people who don't like shimmery blushes might actually still enjoy these. They have one other shade on the Ulta website that's like a berry, but I just saw Jessica Braun use a shade on one of her videos. If I can find it, I'll link it down below. And she was using one of these and it was like a nude color. And I was like, Where'd you, get, where'd you get that? And I think Catrice may have sent it to her. So I don't know if that means more shades of this are coming and Ulta just doesn't have them yet. Or as is the case, sometimes Ulta brings in like two shades and then the Catrice website has more. But I'm gonna be on the prowl for the nude version of this because I love this one so much that I bought that I didn't even think it was gonna work for me when I got it which is really good logic. Like you don't think it's gonna work. You think it's gonna be awful for you. You're 99% sure it's not gonna work and you buy it anyway. Uh, that was the Master Chrome by Maybelline. This is the shade Ro Molten Rose Gold. I was worried that this was going to be too dark on me and then potentially too metallic as well. I'm not one of those people who generally really loves a super foiled looking highlighter. I like wet looking highlighters. I like pearlized looking highlighters. I like natural to kind of mid-tone glowy, but in general, I don't wear the super metallic ones. It's not to say that I don't think they look great on everyone, and I even like them on myself from time to time, but in general, my view on highlighters is kind of like, can I make people think that that's just my skin looking super glowy versus commenting on how pretty my highlighter is? I don't know, personal preference to each his own. Um, I do think this is pretty much a giant eyeshadow. When you swirl your finger in, you are getting a ton of product on here. I mean, that was a light swirl, let's see. So that is what it looks like swatched. As you can see, I mean, it's really, really intense. But when I get, get it really lightly with a brush and kind of tap off a little bit, even on my towel, on a towel, I can get an effect that is a little bit sheer and a little bit more blended out. And honestly, I don't think it's as dark as I thought it was gonna be. In the pan, I thought this was gonna be absolutely way too flippin' dark for me. This is actually really pretty, guys. Like. It's really pretty. And to be honest, this also makes a lovely eyeshadow. So if you wanted to have that really thick, sort of foiled looking pink, gorgeous eyeshadow. Totally recommended for eyeshadow as well. So the other highlighter I picked up was the NYX Love You So Mochi palette. This is in the shade Arcade Glam. They did do one that had slightly darker tones in it. I knew that wouldn't work for me, so I grabbed this one. It does have a really interesting texture. It is not as soft and pillowy as the ColourPop uh, Super Shock cheek highlighters, like those have a lot of sort of bounce to them. This has a little bit, but really not as much as I would have thought. Like, I mean, listen, can you see my fingerprint in those? Sure, absolutely. It's an interesting texture, I guess is what I would say. I was fully prepared to hate this because I had seen a couple people talk about these being glittery and not applying well. I first applied these with my finger, which is how I would have gone in with a ColourPop highlighter didn't work for me, kind of laid product down weird. However, when I went in with a brush, which I didn't think was gonna work, it actually applied it really well. The gold shade here actually has a little bit of a peach shift to it, if you can see that. And neither one of these two shades have a lot of glitter in them. They actually go on the skin and look pretty wet, and I really enjoyed those. The white shade, on the other hand, actually has a decent amount of glitter in it, and it has a blue shift. So I don't know if it's just harder to do these sort of white blue shifting highlighters without glitter, because I definitely feel like I see a lot of them using glitter to achieve that shift, but that is definitely the case in here. So here's what I would say. I can wear all three of these. I like these two. They're not the most mind boggling highlighters I've ever used, but they're good. And then this one's a total pass for me. So at the end of the day, do I think you need this? I, I don't think you do. If you're interested in a bouncier cream-like highlighter, I would recommend grabbing Flexitarian from ColourPop or one of the other tones that might work better for your skin. Those are gonna cost you at least half the price. It's definitely not the cheapest palette out there. I don't know, I'm just kind of giving this an average rating. I didn't hate it, I didn't love it. These two shades were pretty, but once again, it wasn't anything to write home about. Some eye products. I wanna talk about the Shanex O Remix palette. Uh, I didn't pick up the original palette that she put out. That one had lip products on one side and then these eyeshadow colors on the other. 
this new palette has the same eyeshadows on one side, but as opposed to lip, you're actually getting a lot more eyeshadows, which I really prefer. I think this is nice and sleek. Both sides have a mirror. I don't know as if I would have loved this palette if it didn't have both sides of the eyeshadows. Like I enjoyed the colors that were over here, but I also felt like some of these shimmers were a little bit repetitive. Like I didn't know if I needed all of these shimmer shades here. Um, I liked the mattes that she picked, but I really like how all of the shades on this side also pair really well with all the shades on this side. So I feel like this side of the palette is giving you some mattes that I was personally missing. You're getting some different gradients of browns over here. You're getting some interesting deepening colors besides just this very cool tone sort of slate gray color here. I was able to create some really beautiful looks with this. It blended really easily. It didn't have, I didn't have any issues with it fading throughout the day. I will say that the shimmer shades are not my favorite. They're a little bit more densely packed. So you really have to use probably a synthetic brush and kind of swipe over it a few times to build up product. I think we've gotten really spoiled with some um, more foily type shadows that one swipe even with a brush goes on our eyes really well. This is one where you're going to want to rub your brush across it a few times and kind of pack it onto your lid or use your finger to get that full sort of intense pigmentation. I don't honestly mind that though. That doesn't piss me off. Um, these aren't super powdery and so once again, BH Cosmetics proves that it can build amazing eyeshadow palettes at a really affordable price. This is gonna set you back $18.50. You're getting 18 eyeshadows. This is one I would totally travel with. You could make a zillion different looks from work for fun out events to just funky colors. Like, I don't know, I really, really enjoyed this and I'm, I'm really glad she came back and did a remix palette. So if you own the first one, do you need this one? So I guess what it boils down to is, are you using the lip palette? And do you feel like you're getting all the colors you need from this side? of the palette. For me personally, I was bouncing back and forth between both sides just about every time I made a look. So for me, I wouldn't like this palette with just this side and I would never use the lip product. So if I had bought that earlier palette, I probably would donate it and go and get this one. If you don't own it, I would absolutely recommend it. If you already own the first one, I think you just have to do a little bit of soul searching on your own palette collection, how you're currently using the palette, and do you think you would get more use out of this palette given the two sides of eyeshadows. From this haul, I had four different liquid eyeshadows I was playing with, and if you watch my most recent everyday makeup drawer, you will see that I have a huge pile of even more liquid shadows that I am testing because I would like to do a roundup for you guys on all the different formulas that are coming out because I think after the success of the Stila Glitter and glows last year every com every company went stampeding towards some sort of liquid eyeshadow either in a pearlized or glitter form okay so let's go ahead and start with this i do like this this is the shade diamond dust so it has a really pretty holographic true holographic shift to it with kind of a silver base i find this color works really well on lots of different eye looks because it has that holographic shift in it it actually works well with cool tone looks warm tone looks neutral looks like it, it pairs well with a lot of different colors now am i going to rush out and buy every single shade of these I'm not that obsessed, guys. I'm just not. I don't wear glitter enough to warrant paying $24 for a zillion more of these shades. Now, I will definitely keep my eye out for more of those mini kits. Like if there was a mini kit of three of these, like I think there's one at Sephora or maybe it's sold out. But if I saw a mini kit with three shades that I didn't own, I might consider getting something like that but I just don't use glitter enough on a day-to-day -day basis to warrant buying more of these at $24 a piece. That being said, I did really enjoy this one. And at the end of the day, I'm glad I got this color because I think this is the one I will probably get the most use out of versus some of the other shades that they have out. But I have to be honest, I actually like the shimmer and glows better. So this is more of that metallic, pearlized one that doesn't have any glitter in it. They put these out, I believe, new for spring. This is the shade, oh gosh. One of you guys told me how to pronounce this in my last video. Hold on, I'm gonna go find your comment. Product name here on the screen. I believe this is pronounced Bohem. Um, I'm probably butchering that still. Be spoken for was kind enough to walk me through how that is actually pronounced. That being said, it is a really soft lavender. It is super metallic. It goes on really smoothly. You know how sometimes you can use a liquid shadow and you can put it on and then it's not quite as pigmented as you want. So you go back and you add a little bit more and then it starts like getting patchy and pulling up on your eye. 
that never happens with this. A, the pigmentation right out of the gate is absolutely stunning and really smooth and even. And if you did wanna add more and just apply it maybe in a broader space on your eye, you could absolutely add more even on top of the existing amount and not have it break up or do anything weird. So this is gorgeous. I mean, it's gorgeous and I am really glad. I would absolutely pay $24 for this and maybe $24 for another shade. If there was something that was really speaking to me from a color perspective. That being said, I am on the prowl for some cheaper options. So hopefully I can find some drugstore dupes for you guys. But for the time being, this was lovely and I have nothing bad to say about it. One drugstore option I was really excited to try is from JCAT. This is their Holographic 3D Eye Topper. This I thought might be a kind of similar to the Stila Glitter and Glows. It looked a little thinner just from swatching it, to be totally honest. So this is one where I thought I was gonna have to build it up, but I thought, you know, I can probably work with this. If this is a topper over existing shadows and I can build this up, um, tap it on versus, you know, swipe it on. I thought there's definitely ways I can work with this. My biggest problem with this is that it burned the absolute bejesus out of my eyes. In fact, I was filming getting ready using the BH Cosmetics palette. And I had this awesome pink eye going and I added this on and it was a little patchy. So I added a little bit more. And when I first put it on, it was like lightly burning. And when I went in and put more on to build up that opacity, it was like screaming burning. Like I was in so much pain. I had to stop filming and run to the bathroom and like rinse my eyes off. And my eyes were so red and so irritated where this product was. So I don't know if it's just this shade or if there's something in here or maybe my eyes were more sensitive. I am terrified to try this again after that experience, to be honest. So I can't recommend these. Once again, these are getting decent star ratings out on Ulta's website. So I don't know if once again, it's just my eyes are too sensitive for this. I don't think I have the most sensitive skin of life, so I don't know if that's really the excuse here. I've just never had a liquid eyeshadow or any eyeshadow burn the way that this did, so I, I can't recommend these. On the other hand, JCAT put out something called their eye mousse. This is their Prismetal Chrome Eye Mousse. I love this. Like, I love this so much. They keep selling out on their website, so I believe they're getting super popular. I've not seen anyone on YouTube talk about these yet. Maybe they have and I've missed them. This is in the shade Champagne Whiz, so it's this pinky color with like kind of a silvery shift to it. It is, like I mentioned before, sort of a frosting, more pudding-like texture. It's really easy to apply with your finger, but it also works well with a brush. So I was able to use that little 99 cent Wet n Wild concealer brush that I love so much for putting liquid shadows on my eyes. Because this is a little bit of a thicker formula, it's more frosting-like, we're gonna stick with that analogy. I want more of these. In fact, since I first filmed, I was checking out Ulta's website to see if some of the colors had come back in stock, and it looks like they have launched uh, either six or eight new shades. So now there's a pretty expansive shade range out here of these. I really wish these weren't online only, and they had brought these into their stores, but Boohoo, I will absolutely be waiting for like a buy one, get one half off sale on JCAT and be picking up a lot more of these. I should also mention that I had absolutely no issues with these creasing or transferring or um, smudging out on my eyes or fading or anything. They set down, they locked down, they did not, they were kind of budge proof. So this was a very long wearing formula that didn't also make my eyes look dried out. Sometimes when you use a liquid shadow, in fact, I should mention it for the Stila ones as well. Sometimes liquid shadows can have a tendency to kind of dry your eyes out and kind of make them look creased or wrinkled. Neither one of these did that. So I also really appreciate that. You guys still with me? I feel like I've been talking for a thousand hours. Okay, we have three more products, lip products, and then we are done. The first one is a Smashbox Always On Liquid Lipstick. I do enjoy this formula. I just picked up another color. This is the shade Fair Game. When I swatched it on my hand, I thought it was going to be a lot darker and more mid-toned on my skin. And it, it's, it's mid-toned, it really is. But I think you can see here, like, I still felt like I, I still felt like I needed a liner with this when I put it on my lips. I don't know. This is a shade I need to play around with a bit more. I put this on when I was wearing a much more cool toned look and I think it might have just been a little too warm for me that day. So 
Do I regret getting this? No. I was kind of thinking this is going to be my perfect nude when I got it, and I don't think it's necessarily that, but it is still color that I like and enjoy and will definitely use, probably where I'm when I'm wearing more neutral and warm tone looks, and less so when I'm wearing anything cool toned. So the other lipstick that I picked up was from Clinique. It was one of their pop lip formulas. This is their matte lipstick. I still love this packaging. It's this soft touch plastic down here at the end that is the color of the lipstick. This is a beautiful shade. That's it here. You can see it's a lot more rosy toned. And so when I had done that cool toned look, I actually ended up taking off this liquid lipstick and putting this one on because it ended up working better for my look that day. This is closer to my ideal nude. I really do enjoy this formula. It doesn't have any scent to it. It goes on super creamy and smoothly. It has a velvety feel to it. So it doesn't feel heavy on your lips. It's kind of a lighter weight feeling, but has a nice velvety slip to it. And I would say is for being a matte lipstick actually has some decent moisture to it. So I enjoy this. This is a formula that I don't feel like a lot of people talk about. And I would absolutely be interested in trying a shade that was maybe a little bit darker or deeper just to see how those perform. But yeah, I'm really glad to have this in my collection. Last up is another J-Cat product. This is their 3 Delicious Holographic Lip Cream. And this is actually one that is pretty close to being a true holographic. It actually has quite a few color shifts in it when you kind of twisted in the light here. This is a formula I actually did enjoy. It's not as thick or as sticky as like the Huda lip toppers or even the NYX lip toppers that we talked about in the NYX lip gloss review. This is thinner, but it still does pack a really nice punch as far as shimmer goes. My biggest challenge with this was honestly the color. It's a gold that almost leans green. When I put it over top of different lipsticks, that green became a lot more apparent. It's the challenge of ordering online, right? So you think you're finding a shade that's gonna work really well and be pretty unique, and it's unique, don't get me wrong. It's just not a color that I think I'm gonna use a lot, unfortunately. So I would absolutely consider picking up a different shade in this. At this point, I don't necessarily think I need more lip toppers, but if any of the shades appeal to you or you've been interested in trying out a more affordable lip topper, I don't think there's anything wrong with the formula. I think it packs a really high shine. I think it blends out really well over top of different lipsticks. Yeah, so not a bad formula, not a bad product, just poor color selection on my part. All right, guys, that wraps up my haul update from Ulta. Hopefully you guys found this helpful as I kind of navigate through some of the newer products out on the market. So I definitely think we have some winners and obviously a few misses along the way, but I think more good than bad, which is always exciting. I always hate trying new makeup and feeling very wah wah towards it after testing it out for a month. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.